Here we are in our lab um, sheet. If you read through the background, which I hope all of you did because I gave it to you, um, you'll get some background information on evolution and how to use BLAST and all of the different tools that scientists use um, to figure out how to place certain evolutionary um, creatures in different areas. So we're going to use this thing called a claudiogram. A claudiogram is a phylogenetic tree. It's basically saying this came first, then this, then this. Um, so here's a very simple claudiogram of plant species. Um, we have the lycopodium, the selaginella, and then the isoletics. Okay, so each time a branch comes off, that's a division. There used to be a common ancestor between this lycopodium and these guys up here. And that's where he was. But once he branched off, these guys developed certain traits and this guy developed certain traits. And because of their separation, they became two different groups. Okay, so we're gonna use that very simple um, diagram and apply it to creatures that are a little bit larger. So down here, it's a better claudiogram. Um, this is several species of chordatas, which means they've got a spinal cord. So we start with the lamprey. Lamprey doesn't have jaws. So the next, everything after this separation has to have jaws. Okay, so then we have the shark. The sharks don't have lungs. Okay, so then everything after that has lungs. And as we keep going down, okay, we're going to get to our investigation. Okay, so to start, what I would like you to do is go through this, make a claudiogram of these major plant groups. Okay, so we have the mosses. Notice how they don't have a vascular tissue, flowers, or seeds. Pine trees have both vascular tissue and seeds, but they don't have flowers. Flowering plants have all three. Ferns just have vascular tissue. No flowers, no seeds. So if we build our claudiogram from that, we'll see that first most simple creature or organism is the moss. The next most simple creature is the fern. And then the pine tree. And finally, the flowering plants. Okay, so your claudiogram should go mosses, ferns, pine trees, flowering plants, putting the vascular tissue, flowers, and seeds in their respected order. Um, the next graph or figure is going to show us the GAPDH, which is glyceride 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Um, it's an enzyme that catalyzes um, a glucose and glycolysis. It helps molecules break down glucose um, and store it for later use. We'll get to that later in the units. Um, just know that this gene is found in most organisms. Okay, So we'll scroll down to the table. Our gene commonalities are right here, and our protein commonalities are right here. Notice that the gene and the protein are different. Okay, That's because genes and proteins, um, different genes can code for the same protein. If I have a GTA, it's going to code for the same um, amino acid as let's a G, T, C. Okay. If we look at this figure, this table, we see that roundworm has the least common. Next is the fruit fly. Next is the dog. And next is the chimpanzee. So, 
we need to draw a di or a cladogram depicting the evolutionary relationships between all five species. We have to include humans because we're basing all the similarities off of humans. All right. Here's our fossil that we found. So when we look at this fossil, the things that I would like to see is I see some legs here. I see a nice long tail. What it looks like is this is the neck going to the head up here. We see a vertebrae. Definitely see some bones in there, some ribs. And then if you look closely, you may be able to see some feathers. Okay. What it says in this paragraph is that normally we don't find soft tissue with fossilization. It decays. We have to look somewhere else for DNA. However, sometimes we can find DNA in the bones. So we were able to extract some DNA from tissue and use that information to sequence genes. We're going to use BLAST to analyze these genes and make a determination where we would put this fossil. So that we have some DNA, we don't have the entire genome of this creature, but we have some, and that can help us to determine where it goes in its evolutionary phylogeny. All right, so here is our cladogram that we're going to use. We see that a heterotroph means it eats other creatures. And so we have insects, crustaceans, crocodilians, birds, apes, rodents, um, and each place has its separation. Why did it break off? Okay. Well, insects and crustaceans don't have vertebrae. If we look up here, we see some vertebrae. So we're going to have to put this fossil after the vertebrae. I also said that it had um, what looked like feathers. We'll have to put it somewhere in here. We can't really tell if it has feathers or if that's just really bumpy skin. So we're going to say that somewhere in here is where our fossil is. All right, so that was our hypothesis. We determined where we thought it was. Here's where things get technical. We've got to locate and download the gene files. I gave those to you. Those are in the BLAST files right here. Okay, so here is our first one. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. We're going to upload those genes into the BLAST. So, Let's get back to the BLAST website. There it is. All right. All we have to do is put it right into here. Boom. Okay. Do not mess with any of this stuff down here. This is all um, programming stuff that would mess up our data. All we need to do is click the BLAST right there. Boom. We clicked our BLAST. After a while, you'll see that it starts calculating and it will determine which um, creatures have the most similar DNA to ours. So we'll wait as that goes. Let's see if we can figure out what to do next after, as it's going. All right, so we've uploaded, we're viewing, there it is. All right, so this page is going to have two results on it. Nope, not yet. The first section is a graphical display. It's going to look like the red lines right there. Okay, up here is where we put our data. So this is our data. Every red line says that this creature has this data similar. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. So here is our query. That's what we put in. Okay. So it's got um, about 550 or 5,500 um, DNA bases. And so this first line right here, if we click on it, it's going to say Gallus Gallus Alpha. Okay. I don't know what that means, but what we can do is we look down here and we see that it's got a hundred percent cover value. That means this is the same gene as this Gallus Gallus. To look that up, what I would suggest doing is going into Google and typing Gallus Gallus and finding what pops up. It's a red jungle fowl. We'll click on a picture. It looks like a rooster. Okay, So we know that it is a bird. Our DNA sequence is the exact same as that bird. That means that once we've gotten um, all four, we can pretty much determine where it is. If we look back on our lab data, back to our claudiogram, we said it, our creature was very similar to birds. So it's very similar to the Gallus Gallus. Okay. There's a better picture. If the Gallus Gallus has the exact same DNA sequence as our fossil, that means that the Gallus Gallus was related to our creature. They came from the same organism. Our fossil passed down its DNA over many generations to help that creature, or help the Gallus Gallus. Now, we can look at what it's coding for, and it's collagen. If I click on this, it's going to give me how everything lines up. Now, you could go through here and find any differences, but you're not going to find any because they're all the same. There's no gaps. There's 100% commonality. Okay. Anytime that we do this, we can also look at sequence. All right, these are the people that found it first, and they give all the data. They tell um, that it's the chicken. They give you the organism's um, taxonomy, and that's about all you can determine from this page. Okay, it's collagen, the mRNA. All right, good. What you need to do is you need to go into Blast and do that for each of the four, um, four different Blast files, four different sequences. Once you've done all four, then you can make a better determination where things are. All right. So here it goes down. Look at the sequences. Always pick that top one. It will help you the most. It'll be the most related. Okay. You'll get a full classification scheme of it. You get how things are related. Down here is what we're going to be working on next class. Okay. So you have to look through all four of those, hopefully before you get to our next class. I'll put this video up on Google Classroom as well as your homework site so that you can figure out how to do that first one. And I hope by the time you get to class on Wednesday, you'll have looked at this video and you will see what you need to do. On Wednesday, what I would like you to do is I'd like you to create your own investigation. So you go to a new... Um, you have to find a new gene to work with, create a procedure, and work through that. This is just an example procedure. Yours does not have to do or look exactly like this, but I would, 
I would like you to have something similar. Down here are examples of different genes you can use. I would highly suggest using one of these. Okay. Um, once you get all that procedure done, run it through BLAST and then answer these questions. That should be fairly easy for Wednesday. I hope this video helped and I will see you next week. Please, please, please keep up on your readings. I know it's going to be a very difficult week and um, I'm sorry that your sub is not doing what she should be. I'll be in there soon. Hang in there.